Hi lads and welcome back to yet another video. I would like to take a moment to thank you all for your amazing support on the previous video. It has certainly left its impressions. With that out of the way, let us continue to today's topic. What has 2018 meant for Team Fortress 2? In this video, I will touch upon the things that happened within the TF2 community as well as discuss some of TF2's major updates of 2018. So sit back, relax and hopefully enjoy. Team Fortress 2 is definitely not the most popular kit of the class anymore. It is struggling to keep up with far more popular games such as Overwatch, CSGO and the F game nowadays. It has become a niche, a game that has been out there for 11 years now, with its ups and downs along the way. A game that wasn't able to satisfy everyone the past couple of years, and a game that had saw so many people leaving it. However, the team behind the game have shown us that they are not giving up on the game yet, in 2018 at least. There were the occasional updates, each of them called out as both great for the game but also worst update ever by the community, me included. Since even the smallest update these days is good for some uproar, I think it's about time we look at what 2018 has meant for the game we all love. From updates to charity events, I'll be going over them. Let us start off with a summary of the patches that TF2 received over the past 12 months, which is a total of 21 patches with fixes and new content in addition to the usual localization files. Out of those 21 patches, Valve marks two of them as major updates, which we know as Screen Fortress X and the Blue Moon uh, Smismus 2018 update. We will quickly cover what those updates added to the game, because that will not take too long. And that's the total list of what those two updates added to the game. On a more serious note, Scream Fortress X saw the addition of 5 community created Halloween themed maps, a new crate with 20 community created cosmetics which have the chance to be unusual with one of the 11 new community created unusual Halloween effects, 6 community created unusual taunt effects, a new wall paint case with 10 community created wall paints, 2 new community uh, official taunts, 5 different sets of medals for community events and an update to the localization files. If that didn't make you question what the plant over at Valve has been up to for the last year, it gets better than this. The other major update that TF2 received added the following items to the game. A new crate with 18 community created cosmetics, 7 different sets of medals for community events. And that is it. After the update dropped, I felt like something was missing. I felt like something that was meant to be added to the game wasn't. Like it was crossed off the list at the last second. And then it hit me. There was no update to localization files at all in this update. What were they thinking? As you can see, those two major updates can't really be called major if all they were adding were items created by the community. Oh, um, and two taunts, which are actually brilliant, they're amazing, thanks Gabe Newell. Since the major updates weren't the best, perhaps one of the other 19 patches were of significance. And actually, there was one. The Blue Moon update, in my opinion, the biggest update that came to TF2 in 2018, was rolled out at the end of March and made major changes to the matchmaking experience, both competitive and casual. Weapon changes to your majority of Pyro's arsenal, additional weapon changes to other classes, a... You know what, let's just go over the major changes. The Blue Moon update got us a competitive revamp. The number of ranks was reduced from 18 to 13 and the ranking system was changed to be a model based on the CSGO ranking system. There were also changes made to casual. Casual saw the same change to this ranking system, in addition to 5 already existing maps being added to the map pool and a change to the end of the match map vote to only include maps of the same game mode, as well as the ability to queue whilst playing a casual or bootcamp match. The Pyro saw some of its weapons tweaked after Jungle Inferno, also known as the Pyro update. A change to the flamethrower that made it deal more damage based on how many particles actually hit the target instead of granting a flat amount of damage per flame particle. A small nerf to the dragon's fur to require more precision to deal more damage. The gas pass that was so powerful in MVM so the man vs machine upgrade called Explode and Ignite was nerfed. The extinguisher changed to a new design honoring Skechek. Its new design is focused on gaining speed and a damage boost on kill of a burning target and the Thermal Trust's holster time got decreased. And that's not everything. We still got the other classes. The Sydney Sleeper got nerfed if no longer splashes the Gerardi to other players. The Short Circuit saw the addition of its Altfire Energy Ball. The Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol Health Regeneration per Shot got nerfed. The Panic Attack saw a buff to its Point Blank and Close Range damage. And the Atomizer now needs to be fully deployed to gain the Triple Jump. 
Now that all the weapon changes have been discussed, there's still the other additions. A new crate made up of 19 community created cosmetics, a reduction of price for the competitive mode pass from $20 to $10, reintroduction of the auto balance system, a ton of necessary bug fixes, 12 different sets of medals for community events, and some fixes to certain maps. And most important of all, you should know by now which addition I am talking about, added a bot navigation file for CTF Turbine, whatever that's supposed to mean. So all by all, the Blue Moon update was quite the update, yet it didn't receive the major update flag because it didn't have a theme or a special event tied to it, which both Screen Fortress X hat and Smith Smith used to have. Yet this update probably meant so much as some issues the community had with the game were looked at and in most cases improved the experience by quite the mal. Since Valve seems to solely get their new content of the workshop, perhaps it has been an amazing year for the TF2 community and TF2 content creators. Well, it certainly has not been a bad year, but to call it an amazing year, I will leave it to be a bit over the top. Anyhow, 2018 did in fact host some quite exciting community events, ranging from LANs and competitive seasons to charity events. The biggest LAN in Europe, Insomnia, returned once again this year with i63, an event, which also includes the biggest TF2 LAN of the year, that unites the average gamer with big TF2 celebrities. 2018's version was no different with insane plays, roasts and lovely talks. Insomnia will hopefully return this year around the end of August with some spicy gameplay. Mark your calendars. Two other great community events you would not want to forget even though I did myself were Tip of the Hats and Blapperture Co. Both events are community hosted fundraisers looking to raise as much money as possible for the kids. Blapperture Co, a 24 hour streamed event, was hosted by big TF2 co content creators within the community and managed to raise $47,726.41 and that was just the amount of money this year, which is unbelievable. Tip of the Hats, on the other hand, is made out of different steel. 36 hour event spread out over the course of 3 days. You can do the math. It's hosted by some of the most recognized TF2 and ex TF2 players. This year, they introduced a new Overwatch segment, so it's definitely not limited to just TF2. All by all, they managed to raise a total of $244,170.42, which is an immense number. Keep it up, lads. Since money is quite the thing in Team Fortress 2, you need quite a lot of it to buy a basic weapon in the in-game store, we'd only do it short to not mention what happened in the world of TF2 trading. Actually, quite a bit. A few uproars happened as Scrap.tf acquired Backpack.tf the past year, picking up development of Backpack.tf along the way. In addition, both TF2 Warehouse and TF2 Outpost saw their websites closed because of the monopoly both Backpack.tf and Scrap.tf have. We are basically being watched by Geo at this point. Another interesting thing to look at is the ups and downs of the Manco Supply Crate Key and the Vine Medal, the in-game currencies of Team Fortress 2. At the start of the year, keys were at an all-time high at the time of 38 refined, after which they quickly fell to roughly 28 refined. The price didn't increase a lot till the second part of the year, when they picked up momentum and got to a new all-time high of 45 refined. What world do we live in these days? On the other hand, refined metals saw a steady but sure decline in value as keys rose. Nothing too interesting here. We are then left with two more topics I had in mind. One is quite sad and the other one is actually amazing news. So what do you want first, the sad news or would you rather hear the good news first? Major decision? Good, like it matters anyways, this is YouTube, not Netflix. Alright, good news first, I'm obviously talking about the TF2 player count, uh, I meant to say RT Games YouTube channel. The former TF2 YouTuber and streamer had the luck to be exposed to millions of people at once. He gained a lot of traction and has since moved on to variety content and has proven successful. It's amazing to see yet another TF2 YouTuber boom like that. Best of luck to you, Daniel. I doubt that he's watching this video, but I can always try. And then, at last, something that should definitely be mentioned in a video like this. The player count of Team Fortress 2 the past year. Has it gone up? Has it gone down? Has it remained steady? Well, I'm pleased to tell you that I did the quick maths and then I'm able to show you how terrible this year was for TF2. In short, the game had its lowest average player count since going free to play in 2011, which is a real bummer. There was the annual, oh my gosh, I failed school but I have all summer to play TF2 and not think about resets XD. 
bump in player count over the summer and two sudden surges when the Halloween update dropped and when the Smithmas update dropped. The peak near Smithmas could potentially be explained with the number of bots that are looking to catch the random gifted build drops from other players. However, I'm sure that another valid explanation would be people doing their annual I'll just fire up this game real quick to get my free and tradable paint can. Both boost player count on the short run, but on the long run, it only hurts the game. As you can see in this beautiful graph, there was definitely a decline in players compared to last year and the years before that. I was quite surprised to even see that before 2018, the player count didn't really change that much, which could be explained by at least updates of some sort back in the day. Perhaps we'll be able to go back in time and relive the moments of glory when you woke up to an official blog post saying something along the lines of Update X, Day 1, knowing that there was at least enough content that it would take two days to announce all of it. But we can only dream. Alright, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. You can let me know by leaving a comment or a like and perhaps consider subscribing for more videos to come. While you're at it, be sure to check out the description for links to my Twitch where I stream thrice a week, Discord server where we chat daily, and Twitter where I tweet nonsense whenever I feel like it. See ya!